Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rosa and I'm a warehouse associate with Game Nerds. And today I'm going to be live reacting to a mini painting video that I did a few weeks back. It's the Lo-Fi Girl miniature painting video. In this video, I'm gonna walk us through my painting process and discuss the steps I took to paint these two minis. So at the start of this video, I made a list of the paints I was going to use to paint a bear and a deer. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember what this was. Right at the beginning, I realized, oh yeah, I have bases I have to prime before I prime <laughs> the actual minis. And as much as I would have wanted to start with the minis, it's better to do your bases first because eventually you have to decorate that stuff with um, with environmental effects like grass and snow and rocks. So I figured if I lay down a layer or two of primer first, that'll put me on track to get everything done in a good amount of time. So people will use like Mechanica Stender Gray or Abaddon Black typically when they're priming. I like to use Citadel paints and those are the names of the paints that I use shade wise, but um, you can see it's not, it doesn't, you don't have to be too careful here. <laughs> Priming is just laying down a couple layers of paint, um, nothing fancy. Uh, but yeah, there were a couple discs that I had to prime beforehand. So I just want to get it good and coated. <laughs> I could have used a stand for this, but. <laughs> No, <laughs> I don't mind paint on my fingers. Okay, I guess I decided the deer was more fun to start with. <laughs> so I decided to prime the deer first. Um, same as the bases, I used a bad and black. Uh, I kind of jumped between the two of them, mostly just for time. You don't have to do this when you're painting your own minis. You have all the time in the world. Uh, generally for uniformity <laughs> paint one mini and then go to the next but um i opted to keep things kind of dark a dark base with the abaddon black uh that's what i had on hand i actually think i ran out of mechanicus standard gray just before this video uh let's see so yeah just nothing complex here just make sure the mini has a nice coating of whatever you want to prime with you don't have to prime with black either or gray Truly, like I know people will probably fight me in the comments, but you're absolutely allowed to prime with whatever color you want. Typically you stick to using a base paint or at least what Citadel calls base paint thinned out. But depending on the color you use, it can have a huge impact on the rest of the miniature, like how it looks overall. Like if you were to base it with red, the deer would maybe have like stronger, like fleshy tones. Like when you go over it with like white and tan and stuff, like that would probably pop a little bit more. I could have done that here and the red would have really brought out those colors. Um, but there's no right or wrong choice here. Fight me. <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah, so we just go ahead and prime the little deer. A good habit to get into when you're painting is to paint all in the same direction. Uh, with priming, it's not so critical, but a lot of the great painters, the great mini painters out there recommend that when you do start laying down colors and layers and things that pick a direction and stick with it. Um, a lot of times it's you'll just conform the direction to the flow of say the texture on the mini that already exists or just the form of the mini the deer and the bear both actually had a lot of texture built into them and it would be just it just helps you as you're painting to kind of follow the direction of the fur and how the hair lays down and then commit to that as you lay down each subsequent layer I know that's not always possible but from a uniformity standpoint it can have a really big impact on the finished product. So, oh, coffee break. Gotta have it, <laughs> gotta caffeinate. <laughs> and I think I just took the same approach here. Just more a bad and black, I think. Yeah, oh no, I switched up. I think it was running low <laughs> on black. This is a, I think it's a WizKids 
paint. It's old. It's old school paint. It's from a stash I have. So, you know, don't go look and you don't, <laughs> it's all good. Um, I think it was one of the Nolzer's paints or something, but just more black, nothing fancy. Um, especially because the bear was going to be brown, dark brown, mostly just shades of brown. Um, I guess if I really wanted to, I could have primed it with something lighter, even something in the realm of browns. Like I could have gone tan or just used brown straight away and primed with that. But I like to keep it different from what the base coat is actually going to be like shade wise, just so I can differentiate and make sure I've got all the areas covered that I need to have covered. Um, so I just stuck with black here, kept it simple. There were a lot of little crevices on this guy. He has his mouth open, so it really helps to <laughs> turn your mini around and get all in there, fill in the cracks, because there's nothing as heartbreaking as getting close to the end of a mini, and then you <laughs> check the guy's mouth, and you're like, ah, didn't even prime that. Yeah, here we go, Mornfang Brown. I knew I wanted to base at least one of them with that color. It's such a rich brown. It's one of my favorite shades. Um, fun fact, I once dumped an entire pot of Mornfang Brown in my lap. Um, that's why it looks the way it does. I need to get some more. I was really <laughs> debating here. <laughs> Cause at the same time I was kind of acting too. <laughs> Because I had another camera, like, coming out the side of me. I was like, okay, how do I be lo-fi and chill? Well, not like this. Um, okay. Yeah, okay. I think I decided to base the deer with the Morn Fang Brown. Because I knew I wanted to do a deer that still had its spots. And a lot of adult stags and deers don't have that you typically only see that with like baby deer like fawns and so I did a quick search just before filming and I guess the fallow deer is one of those species that retains its spots into adulthood and they have a really pretty coat too so I figured that would be the most dynamic and a fun challenge for me never painted a fallow deer before but <laughs> why not do it today <laughs> so I think I opened with that shade of brown and I guess not I guess I switched over at some I don't know what I was doing I think I was mixing colors you could do that like there's no harm in in creating your <clears throat> your own shades for painting I think I I brought in um Citadel and Army Painter paints those are my two mainstays I love using them they mix really well and it's easy to get a good flow out of them just by throwing in some water. You can use Lamian Medium if you want, but water works just as great. Okay, so I guess I switched it up is what I did. Um, <laughs> so instead of starting with the brown, I started with his legs. Um, I guess deer have like white socks, I guess. Like their legs are predominantly a lighter shade than the rest of them. And that was true of the fallow deer as well. So I think I had like a, I know it looks really white here, but it was, um, I think it's mummy robes is the army painter paint color. It's like a very off white bordering tan shade. And I think I just thinned it out with some water and just went over it. It's one of those things where you, you wanna do a couple of passes for sure. You know, let one layer dry and then do the next. Um, that's why it's beneficial to have two minis, honestly, when you're filming, because while you're working on one, the other can try and vice versa. <laughs> so let's see. I think I had, what was it, four? No, I had all day to film this one. That's what it was. It was the Christmas one that was shorter. But I think this was two minis, seven, eight hours. So not bad. Okay, so you can see, like, the deer. You can really see through that. Uh, light layer, that first layer, it's it's still pretty transparent. Um, that's good. 
you want that. Um, you don't want to lay it on too thick because then you end up seeing more paint texture than the actual mini texture. We don't like that very much. <laughs> it's kind of grody. Because like they have like their tummies and their legs are that light color, I figured that was where I would lay down the majority of it and then go over his back with the brown. So at this point, I probably could have been satisfied with that layer and then paused and moved on, but... I don't know. Anyone else out there have perfectionist tendencies? Yeah. Get in the comments. Okay, so I started building up with that light shade. Uh, I moved like up the deer's belly and up its neck. And eventually I moved to his face. And that's just because like given the coat on the deer in real life, I guess, it's, it's just all light here. And really the only darker shades are on its back and its tail so I was I definitely had like a reference image don't hesitate to use reference images people it's okay uh, had one just kind of sitting off to the side and I did not know what a fallow deer looked like before this day so references don't hurt so I guess because they have like light coloration on their faces it was important to put down at least a base of this light color. I think, yeah, I think it was just like a combination of mummy robes and white, you know, just any white. You can honestly use any acrylic white for this. So I think at this point, like, because the layers are so thin, they dry faster and that's great, especially when you're trying to cram two minis into a one day session. <laughs> so you can still kind of see like the black shining through that first layer, that's good because I was gonna go back over it with another layer at, at minimum to make that white, that light color pop. So while that's drying and finishing up drying, um, I pivoted to the bear and worked out whatever I was gonna start with him. Okay, the Morn Fang Brown, one of my favorites. Directionality, that's, with the bear, the fur being upright with its stance means it's very easy to keep your paint going in one direction or the other, up and down. I mean, I'm sure some people will be like, no, going down is best or going up is best, but up and down, it's that keeping that vertical flow is good. I mean, you won't get paint chunks by going left and right it's pretty thinned out here. It's not probably not as thin as the white on the deer, but you can see how glossy it is, and that's largely due to how much water has been put into the paint as well to thin it out. Um, so it looks like it's super duper wet, but it'll dry a whole lot faster the more water is in that paint to water ratio uh, mix. I don't think I actually used a reference photo for the bear. I probably could have, but <laughs> I mean, bears are pretty <laughs> run of the mill. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry to all the bears. It was like either he's a polar bear or he's a black bear or he's a brown bear. But I think I just went with brown bear and hope for the best. I don't know. Show the bears some love. Oh yeah, even though like the pads on the bear's paws would have some color, you can go over it with brown, not a problem. It's just a little bit more shading. It, it can't hurt. So uh, really it's just important to get all your crevices, your nooks and crannies uh, 
painted. And this guy had a lot. <laughs> he had a lot of little, little divots and corners and things. So it's always good to like look your mini over before you even start priming it to just kind of get a sense of where where the the hiding spots are like it's just keep in mind eyes are going through it like oh yeah I need to make sure I get you know inside his mouth or between his claws that way going forward you don't get caught by surprise and suddenly you're halfway through a mini and there's just gaping holes (laughs) where there's no paint so yeah just getting all the also this brush looks this is not this is a very old brush don't be like me guys um this is a very old brush that's taken a beating over the years but i like using it for like priming and basing because you don't have to be fancy with it you really just kind of throw in some paint down (laughs) it's not like intricate detail work so take your most beloved most abused brush and just have at it so yeah that brush has seen some action (laughs) Okay, I guess I switched back to the deer. Once the bear was fully coated in brown, I switched back and I brought out some more of the the light colors for his legs and tummy and face so that I could go back over and do another layer. Good thing to keep in mind is which colors you used. <laughs> when you make a mix like that, it can be easy to kind of forget, like in the moment, like, ah, what ratio did I use? What shades did I use? So just kind of keep that in the back of your noggin. I don't know if you can see here, but it's like from where I'm standing, it already looks like it's going on like thicker. Like the color is more pronounced here. You can see less of that black belly shining through. It looks more light. That second layer really just makes all the difference in the world. It's still thinned down. Like it still has water mixed into it. But just having that layer stacked up on it makes a huge difference. And go three layers if you if you want. Like, there's no harm in that. It's just by keeping them thin, you can control how much paint is getting thrown onto the mini and it doesn't cake up and get bulky and obscure the details on your miniature. I think what's really cool is you can already see like the the fade progression like as you move up like its legs look really stark white and then as you move up its belly it kind of fades back up into the black like that gradient so satisfying it's one of my favorite things to do I don't get to do it often enough but it's a great setup for blending when you want to blend your colors having that gradual I don't know, it's not saturation per se, but that gradual fading means you can kind of control how the color progresses into the next color. And because I knew I wanted the back of the deer to be some sort of brown, I didn't want it to be like a harsh, stark line between the two. So having that gradient there would mean that it kind of just one fades into the next and looks a little bit more natural, a little bit more true to life. So it's one of my favorite techniques. So I switched the deer off again. Now that it had a couple layers thrown down, uh, I switched back to the bear so the deer could dry and the bear had finished drying. <laughs> so it's really just a game of mini juggling at that point. I think this would be the second layer of the morning fang brown. Yeah. And so I don't know if you can see like my wet palette in the back there. It's got like a special, I don't know, like a wax paper. Um, that I have not saturated with water, but I've got like big puddles of water on it and that I can pull from with my brush to mix into the paint to thin it out. It's extremely useful. Um, 
I know we sell the Armored Painter wet palette, and I think that's exactly what that is there. But uh, very useful for keeping your paints like wet and active while you're painting so that you don't have to constantly be replenishing it from your paint pot and uh, just extremely useful. <laughs> okay, this is the second layer of brown on the bear, I believe. And just punching up that color a little bit. Layer was thinned out with water, making sure all the nooks and crannies are covered. And then I think once that was finished, I pivoted back to the deer. I knew I wanted to keep the palettes fairly limited. I know it looks like a lot of paint in the background there, but I didn't want to go too crazy to have to keep track of all the different blends and mixes and layers and things. So by having two similarly colored creatures, I wouldn't have to go too crazy and remember like 50 colors. So basically I think each mini shared like 50% of the colors I brought with me just to keep things streamlined. So here I went with like a, it was like a sandy, like ochre color for like that, that middle shade between the light and the dark on the belly and the back of the deer. And I know it doesn't necessarily look like it from here, but it is thinned out. It has water mixed in and, um, but it's, it's a little bit thicker here so you can definitely see it lays on a little bit heavier the black doesn't shine through as much but this way it kind of would create a nice um middle tone between the really light and the really dark and then as you refine it you can you know blend that further and create like a really pretty gradient in fur colors And I do a lot of stippling. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm not, you know, not long brush strokes, but I'm more just like patting the mini. Um, that's, I mean, it's personal preference, but I think because this mini has so much texture built into it, like the fur of the deer is very raised. It's not like a completely smooth surface. I think I feel like I have more control, like patting the paint into the surface. Um, and that way you reduce like brush lines and uh, you can get a little bit better control over how the paint lays on the mini. Um, let's see, I'm turning it all around. Just pulling the color down, like down its legs and I don't know, shout out to people who use their fingers to wipe paint off. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I was just referring to the picture at this point. I didn't realize like they have the front of their legs is more brown and the back is more white, but that's why it's good to like completely coat your mini, like depending on the area that you're blocking off, like the legs and the belly, you just make it all white. That way, if you do have more stuff to add on to it, like brown later, the color pops and it's not just getting muddied up in the primer and the base shades down below. Some people will be like, why do you use such a huge brush for such tiny things like their legs? Like just use a smaller brush and it's personal preference. Like you can absolutely go down in size, use a thinner, smaller brush, but I've found you can actually maintain a lot of control on how much paint 
gets loaded onto those finer details by having a bigger brush. You can hold more in the bristles with a bigger brush and thus dispense accordingly. Whereas with that, with a really small brush, you only have like a handful of bristles that are clinging to what little paint you pick up and you have to kind of go back and forth a lot more. Whereas bigger brush holds more, less jumping around. So, and then you just use like the edge of the brush to just run along the edge of like the leg that we're painting. So it's just a personal preference thing. Not everybody does it, but I know some people are always like, why not just go smaller (laughs) and use a tinier brush? And you can, it's just, is what works for me. Let's see. Oh yeah. Time to pick a new disaster video to listen to. That's the thing, like all this stuff, like lo-fi and chill, Joey, but I had my, <laughs> my phone was just playing like aviation disaster. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm weird. All right, switched out. So now the deer can dry while the bear is getting worked on. I think I just went back with that same color on my life. I cannot remember what it's called. I don't use it very often. I don't know if it was XV88 possibly but yeah I knew that I wanted to do something to show a little bit of contrast on the fur because you have all those indentations from the fur and the miniature itself you can really punch those up by highlighting and throwing in like contrast for shadows and it really makes the fur pop so I just tried to put areas of like lighter paint on like where where light might hit on a bear that's standing up like stuff that's closer to the light source like the tops of the arms the tops of the head you know the back like the shoulders uh, the tops of the legs I know that some people will just like this is a really good idea actually to take their mini put a light source on it take a picture and that's your reference photo for when you actually paint it that way you're not constantly confusing your light source as you're turning the mini around you can just refer back to the picture like oh, okay yeah the light was hitting the tops of his arms so that's where I want my highlights to be super useful I cannot remember who taught me that but it's just like oh, my life was changed <laughs> when I learned that so yeah like his belly sticks out a little bit so you want to draw like the eyes to like his tummy his cute little bear tummy so that's where I put some of the lighter color there and you don't have to be perfect with it because you're going to still go back over it with like contrast or darker paint to fall into the crevices you can kind of it's it's a convenient way of doing it when you have a lot of texture on a mini to let the mini do the work for you you don't have to be perfect about lining every single divot between every chunk of fur so here just did some tummy highlights and leg highlights. Reminds me of a sun bear, actually. <laughs> I think it's like the one bear that isn't a polar bear, or brown bear, or black bear that I know of. It's like they have like little patches of yellow on their chest, sort of really cute. I don't know. Oh, don't treat your brushes the way I treat mine, guys. Oh God. Oh yeah, okay. So this is an actual dry brush. (laughs) I realized, oh yeah, duh. Helps to have a dry brush when you're doing dry brushing. So one of my favorite things to do when I'm painting is to dry brush. You take your brush, you load it up with paint, and then you wipe off about 95% of that paint on a towel or whatever. And you basically just wanna be able to just barely tell that there's still paint on this brush. Like by the time you've run it, across your paper towel for the 90th time there's almost no color coming off of it bizarrely that's how much you want (laughs) when you're dry brushing because you're just you're very lightly going over the tops like the highest parts of the mini with your color and I know it doesn't look like I'm doing that here it's kind of do as I say not as I do but um, (laughs) you could just go over the ridges the top ridges with the brush and it'll catch the raised areas of fur that would be closer to the light source. It is a, a 
fantastically easy way to make your minis look like a million bucks. Just throwing a little bit of highlight down with a dry brush. It's one of my favorite techniques ever. You can do it on the mini. You can do it on your basing. That's how you can make dirt look more realistic, oddly enough. But yeah, just by dragging that color back and forth and allowing it to stick to the highest parts of the mini, you can get a really cool highlight. Okay, yeah. So because dry brushing dries really quick, because there's so little of it, and because I was on a tight time frame here, <laughs> I jumped straight to shading um, to bring out the contrast, you know, between the, the highs and the lows of the fur. So when you go over it with a shade or a contrast, I don't think that Citadel really manufactures shades so much anymore. They've pretty much gone straight into just all contrast. But um, with these, you can, you know, run it over a given spot on the mini and allow the liquid itself to just pool in those like deep spots and and generates its own shadow basically its own shade you don't want to like saturate the thing you don't want to drown the mini in in contrast but it's way more than say like dry brushing <laughs> so the dry brush dried really fast and i just jumped straight to the shade and i th think i don't want to say it wrong i'd have to look back over my notes but one of the browns <laughs> but i just went over this spaces where I had highlighted and I just let that shade fall into the natural crevices of the fur and I guess whatever I turn it back around like his tummy will already look like that much more realistic because you've got like shadows and highlights there okay so I popped the bear off to give the highlights and lowlights a chance to dry and then I realized I had been neglecting my bases so I <laughs> figured I would get back to that they just have a couple layers of primer on them. Uh, like I said at the beginning, I just used black, nothing fancy. I knew that I wanted to do some natural basing, just something that looks like the woods or, you know, snow-covered terrain. Doesn't have to be fancy. I just kept it dark. So I think I en ended up using dryad bark here. Yeah. If I move my finger, I might see the name. Yeah, I think it's Dryad Bark. Okay, cool. And so I just went over that. I don't even know. Okay, yeah. So didn't get thinned out a ton. You can see I'm kind of like going back and forth, dropping a little bit more water into the paint. I think I had lost some water buildup on my palette, so just replenishing. So you don't have to be fancy. I'm just throwing it down. I'm sure there are schools of thought that say, like, you need to paint in the same direction when you're basing your paints and stuff. But I just went perpendicular here. I don't know. I think I went about it like how window washers do. <laughs> you just you go one way and then wipe the other. <laughs> but ultimately, I don't think it matters quite so much when you're doing the bases because they're pretty much getting covered by your environmental effects, by the mini itself. You're going over it with a few layers. I think if I think it's a case by case thing, depending on how you intend to use the base of the mini. And so yeah, like it's so quick and easy. Like I don't even think I I didn't want to like touch the rims of the base and get it wipe it all off. So I just went straight to the next one in my hand. Very easy peasy stuff. Looks like a chocolate dictorium.
Okay. Yeah. You can kind of see how the base looks a little bit translucent still because I did use like a clear base. When I popped it off, you could kind of see through the paint there. That's okay. Like it's dealer's choice. You want to lay it on thicker? Go for it. I'm not going to stop you. <laughs> I just, I knew that it wasn't critical for the work I wanted to do. And I just opted to keep things simple. So. All right. The deer's back on. Let's see. So really you can just see like that top area on its back. Like there's not a lot left in terms of how much there is to go color wise. So I knew I was going to start laying down the darkest of the browns at this point. Cause that's where all the color seems to be concentrated on the stag's coat. So I think I did a little bit of mixing and blending back there. Throw in some water. But yeah, I don't think there's, I don't think there's any paint I used in the video that wasn't thinned down to some degree. Like truly, I think the dry brush may have been the only one that I kept like as is the dry brush thickness. Like if you, if you look at the paint in the pot itself, it's very almost chalky um, consistency and you don't want to thin that down any more than it already is because you'll prevent it from sticking to the mini the way it's supposed to. So, but basically everything else, water, played a part in it <laughs> so never forget to thin down your minis a little bit you just don't want you don't want chunky paints I don't recommend it right. okay. I think I jumped down a size on the brush yeah so we've got smaller bristles this time around this is just personal preference. Like I probably could have kept going with the other one, but because the actual square footage of what I was working on at this point had dropped <laughs> rather a lot at this point, I was like, okay, we'll just do it with the brush too. That way you don't accidentally smack something that you don't want to. You can block off areas of the mini with, um, oh gosh, what is it? I mean, you could use masking tape if you wanted, but there's like some goop out there that you can use to um, to block off parts that you don't want to accidentally hit with your brush. You can do that. Um, use tape. Anything that comes off easy but doesn't take off all of your paint in the process. That's really good for when you're starting out and you haven't quite gotten a sense of like control that you have of your brush and the mini. I mean, I still do it from time to time when I know that I'm getting like really close to the edge of something or like it's really fine detail work. There's nothing wrong with blocking it off. But I think as you get a little bit more confident in your painting, you're less likely to do it and you're just, okay, well I'll change the brush size and go from there. doesn't mean accidents don't happen, but thankfully <laughs> accidents are very fixable in the world of painting. They're more forgivable than you think. Okay, so the th brown has been thinned down and I'm, you notice I'm like pulling it further down the body of the deer. And I know it's probably not like immediately apparent. I you can kind of see it on that back leg there. It's the colors, the overlap. It's not like an aggressive stark contrast. It's not like brown and then tan. It's, you know, as the brown lays over the tan, the color changes a little bit, but it's, it's like a softer gradient. And it looks more like fur, right? Like it's animals rarely have something be immediately this, immediately that. There's like a nice gentle blending there. So to the backs of the ears. I forgot about the backs of the ears for like the longest <laughs> time while I was painting this. And I realized, oh, deer have ears. So don't forget nooks and crannies.
Yeah, that's a nice shot. You can really see like that gradient there. It's one of my favorite things. It's it's such a simple technique, but it produces such a noticeable effect on the mini. It's just mm, gradients. <laughs> They're the best. You'll notice I didn't swap out to the bear at this point. I stayed with the deer. That's because I wanted to try, it's a technique called wet blending, I think. Yeah, wet blending, which is exactly what it sounds like. Um, throwing down some wet paint on top of some wet paint and then blending accordingly. Um, I haven't experimented with it much before. Why not do it live, right? And I knew that, like, I wanted a good gradient, but I hoped that in the process of wet blending, I could get that gradient faster than if I waited for each layer to dry separately. So I brought back that, I think it's XV88, like that ochre tan color, brought it back and threw that down while the brown at the top was still drying. And, I'm, you know, there's pros and cons to doing that, but... My hope here was that while everything was still wet, you could kind of get that halfway color between the two because it was being basically blended onto the mini. And I didn't hate it. I know that a lot of painters enjoy doing it that way, especially for gradient effects. And uh, it worked out okay for me, so. <laughs> See, I think it's a little bit more detail work on his face. I know that like the contrast between the two colors looks kind of stark there, but I do know that I go back and finesse it a little bit more. So I know it looks like really abrupt, you know, brown and then tan, but more blending happens, I promise. I feel like 90% of painting is blending. <laughs> so it's okay, it's okay. I jump forward a little bit just to show like getting the yeah. the top of the deer's back, which the deer have like this, this thin ridge of like very, very dark fur along their spine. And it's like, ah, okay, well, I'll drop that on there. And I think I just like kind of stippled it on. And I know that the brown on the back wasn't fully dry, but it was drier than if I were wet blending, so. That way it wouldn't be such a, a stark line when I dropped that little ridge on. But it still kind of blended in without getting overly saturated. Yay, detail work. Oh, it's my favorite part. Finger painting. Okay, so yeah, I knew I had wanted to paint a deer that still had spots on it as an adult. And I guess like the fallow deer species has that. So I went in and grabbed some white. I think I used closer to true white here as opposed to like a blend with mummy robes or what have you. Because those those spots on the deer are really light. Like they're pretty white there. Okay, moving on to the antlers. I love painting antlers. It's one of my favorite things to do because it's really just an exercise in gradient. Can you tell I like gradients? <laughs> so here, I I think I did the, the dark to light progression. Um, you can go in either. I've seen people paint like they start light and then go progressively darker. Um, I just haven't, I don't think I've tried that to my knowledge, but I, I went from dark to light. So, cause I knew I was already basing it with dark colors like the brown and the black and stuff. And so as you move further up the antler, just lighten your paints accordingly.
and again, like you don't have to use like a micro fine brush here. You can whatever you're comfortable with. So I just knew I could get more paint loaded on to a bigger brush. Okay, so I threw down a couple layers of the dark on the antlers. Wanted to give that a chance to dry for sure. And then switch back to the bear. I never named these guys. I should have. I was dry brushing, um, just highlighting again, because I'd already gone over with like highlight and then contrast. And then to dial up the highlights some more, you can go back over, which I did here. So you'll notice, like, I put it on the brush, I loaded it on, and then I wiped most of it off on the paper towel. Dry brushing 101. Very fun. But it can be a waste of paint sometimes. But yeah, so you can already, you can tell, like, the musculature of the bear and the fur is starting to have more definition. Like, you can... You can see like it has dimension and that's why I love dry brushing because you get that effect almost immediately. More detail work. He has like claws, his toes and his paws and his teeth. Just went back over that with like a bone white. I know it looks pretty white here, but I think they make paint shades that are like wraith bone and God, what are they? But any paint that has bone in the name, you're probably going to get a pretty perfect shade out of that to throw down on stuff like claws and teeth. Very tiny. You can kind of see the bases back there. I think I'd been slowly adding to them, like in between swapping between the bear and the deer. I knew I wanted to do a snow effect on one and then dirt, gravel, rocks on the other but hilariously the thing that looks like snow is not the one that ends up being snow <laughs> I think I ended up painting that um, army painter sells like a basing kit and uh, you can get all of your um, landscape effects in little baggies like that super useful super fun you can paint it I painted the rocks actually because I just didn't like the shade of rock You can also use cork. So if you have any cork lying around, that's basically what the rocks are. And you can just like crumble them up and chop them up. And there's your rocks. Oh yeah, don't forget to paint the base that's actually a part of your mini. So like the bear is standing on gravel, rock, something. So don't forget to prime and paint that too. So pretty important part there. You can cover it up later, but just make sure it's got something on it. So I threw down some brown, like some dryad bark. What's on the mini holder right now, that base I covered with Armageddon dust. Armageddon dust or Armageddon dunes, one of the two. I have to check. <laughs> but it dries and it looks like dirt. It's awesome. I love it so, so much. Um, the only thing is, is it dries very you know one color you know it's it's just one uniform color any 
contrast or effects, shadows, whatever, come from the height of the granules themselves. So to reinforce how much contrast there was in the gravel in the ground, I ran over it dry brushing some, probably with more dry-eyed bark, maybe Renox hide, and I just dry brushed over it. You don't have to be fancy, making sure I didn't get the table wet. Um, but I just took a brush here. This is actually a makeup brush, believe it or not. Um, you are absolutely not limited in what kind of brushes you can use to do this. Um, whatever gets the job done. But I happen to have a little makeup brush that I never used for makeup. But the bristles and the thickness and like the shape of the brush were perfect for dry brushing. So I just I grabbed that on my way out of the house. But I dry brushed over the gravel, and the next time we see it, you'll and it's had a chance to dry. You'll see like the gravel and the rocks actually pop. It's not just natural shadow; it's it's painted shadow. So good contrast. Yay! Okay, bear's back on. Bear has been glued to his base. Um, I used Sterling Bottlemeyer for it's this goopy stuff here. Looks like poo, but it's amazing for doing like mud and and like battlefield muddiness and stuff um it, it looks like dirt when it dries but it goes on like chocolate pudding <laughs> so but it's it's kind of it's got some granules on it it's kind of mushy um but it's it can be molded a little bit too which you'll notice i have like this little tool here um it's got like a little scoop on the end of it, which is helpful for when you've got uh, these Citadel uh, basing effects because they are they can be pretty thick. Like the the Valhalla Blizzard snow is it's powdery like snow. It's really hard to get that on your brush and then transfer it to your base, and it can really muck up the bristles on your brush too. So if you have a tool or a really tiny olive spoon or something. <laughs> I definitely recommend that instead. So I knew I wanted some sort of like natural dirt effect for the bear. So I just kind of piled this stuff on. Um, obviously like drying time varies depending on how much you throw down. And I knew I wanted to stick like rocks and grass and stuff into it. And you can take advantage of like the effects being wet to help hold those things in place. I know you can use glue too, but like get a two for one there. <laughs> but yeah, even with the bear slightly out of focus, you can see like having like his tummy highlighted like that with like the, the lighter shades and colors, like it makes it look more dynamic, you know, instead of just one uniform color. So you know, there's no right or wrong way to paint bears, but it's cool when you throw in more than one color. <laughs> it makes it look a little bit more lifelike. And you can kind of see how, like, there's patches of dark on it, and that came from the contrast. But it already looks more natural, having that variation in shadow. All right, whip out some moss. Okay. Yeah, so that was me testing out, like, how well the moss was going to stick to... The basing effect answer not very well. So <laughs> it's always good to have some glue as backup. Citadel makes a pretty good plastic glue, um, but I love this, what I'm grabbing here is the Army Painter glue. My container is a mess. Don't look too closely. Um, it's a long suffering bottle of glue. Okay, so I got some moss and grass thrown down on the bear. You can see in the deer on the left hand side of the screen like some grass patches that I stuck down, but I knew I wanted the deer to be walking across some snow or like snow that had recently fallen and if I'd planned better, <laughs> I would have thrown some white down before I struck the deer down but ah, uh, who can plan for these things? Um, so what I did was I dry brushed some white onto the base and the basing effects that the deer was standing on to give myself a little bit of um, almost like primer for the snow so that any gaps where the snow wasn't like perfectly laid down, you still had some white showing through. It's just extra coverage. Um, you don't have to do that. It was more just, I wanted to 
have backup snow effect <laughs> in case I ran out of snow in the middle of painting. Also, I guess with the antlers here, you can see like the progression from like dark to light as I moved f closer to the tips of the antlers, you know, I just used lighter and lighter paints and threw down a layer or two of that at a time. So it's not overly complex, really easy. You don't need a ton of paint, just markedly different shades that are just distinctly dark to light. Um, so there's the white paint. I dry brushed a little bit down there just to kind of like block off spots where I knew I wanted the snow to be. Again, it's probably better <laughs> to do that before you commit to sticking your mini down, but it's not the end of the world. Not the end of the world. And if you make a mistake, nine times out of ten, you can wipe it off. <laughs> Okay, moving on to Valhallen Blizzard. It's the Citadel snow effects. I whipped out that tool, the one with the little scoop. And, ooh, you can see it. Like, that snow, it, it behaves a lot like real snow. It's very powdery, very... It's hard to handle. Okay, so I'm scooping out some more snow. And... God, I wish I knew how to describe the texture of this stuff. It really is powdery. Like, it's a wet powder. Mushy. And I just used the tool to kind of mold that to where I wanted it to go. I personally don't like using brushes to spread out the snow. The granules can really muck up your brushes if you don't get it off fast enough. It's kind of a pain in the butt to remove. Uh, so if you have like a tool like the one I'm using or just a spoon, anything, I think it's better than using your fragile brushes. So user preference, but your mileage may vary. <laughs> so I just kind of plop it on there. Um, the great thing about nature is there's no right or wrong way to make it look. You don't have to be perfect because there is no perfect. Um, just kind of throw it down. I tried to stick to the areas that I had based with white already. Just to give it the effect of like, the space isn't totally covered in snow yet. But like, you can kind of build a story here. Like you don't, if you plan right, I guess. <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah, the deer was just passing through a field. Snow hasn't completely covered the space yet. But it will, you know, just, I don't know. It's fun. It helps me to have a little narrative in my head as I'm painting. Um, and I love like snow effects on the mini. I don't know if any of you saw our giveaway video, but I painted Santa Gandalf and Santa Saruman and they had snow effects on them as well. And I, I like put little granules on tops of their hats and on their coats and it just kind of looks like they've been running through snow. So I'm a huge fan of that. And I think I do it on the deer here as well. Like I just kind of sprinkle it on his head and on his back, like he's been walking through a snowstorm. I'm sorry, the deer is out of focus. I was getting so into it. <laughs> I was so excited. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the more excited I get, the more a goblin I become, you know? Okay, there we go. <laughs> I think at this point I finally decided, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna commit gonna put some snow on my deer there's just nothing more romantic than having like this massive stock just like silently stepping through the woods in the snow not making a peep just covered in the fluffy stuff yeah i'm sure there are more elegant ways to apply this stuff if you know of it get in the comments I'm just throwing it down. <laughs> just, I knew I was on a, a short timeline here, so. But really just as long as I got some snow on the top of the guy. Okay, I think what this is is like a shade of some sort. I think I just didn't, I wanted more contrast out of the rocks and the gravel on the bear's base. 
and nothing says you can't put paint on your environmental effects so I just went over the like the rocks with the shading and I let it kind of fall into the cracks in the rock and gravel and already it just looks a little bit more natural nothing stopping you I think I was feeling pretty good about where I was at at that point so here we have a 360 view of our fallow deer with all of its effects it was definitely still drawing at this point but if you're careful with it you can handle it this was a great practice a great exercise in painting efficiently and doing as much work as is feasible in such a short window of time uh, a fun challenge um, requires you to kind of think on your feet and plan accordingly um, if I could come back and do it all over again tomorrow I would God, there's our bear you know what let's take a closer look So there you have it. Thank you so much for watching. I enjoyed this experience immensely. I would love to come back and do it all over again. If you would like to pick up any of the things that we use in this video, there will be a link in the description below, or you can go to gamenerds.com and browse our selection yourself. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on any future content. My name is Rosa and I'll see you next time.